Hey, long time no video. I've just not been in a YouTube-y sort of mode. I thought it would be kind of funny to do the whole like, you know how everyone's like, why are YouTubers quitting blah blah and run with something like that? Um, but, <laughs> you know, I would do that if I was trying to follow the algorithm, which is what they're all doing. I don't think that that many YouTubers are quitting, it's just like a few high profile ones did and then everyone's like, oh, why is everyone quitting? And they start a hysteria and notice that it gets views and that's why everyone's jumped on. Anyway, um, no, like I'm not... <laughs> In my case, like, I don't make a living off YouTube, so pfft, I can do what I like. Um, but really what's made me pull back from YouTube is um, just like the amount of time that it takes and me not being in a youtube -y kind of mood. Um, what's going on with me? I mean, I've had like some of my worst breakdowns in a while. Um, like, uncontrollable crying, you know, like, I will have these crying spells. I have depression, what can you do? Um, but usually, like, they'll go for a bit and then peter out and maybe I can distract myself by writing something or reading an article or whatever, but no, these were ones that just kept going and <clears throat> uncontrollable enough that dad caught me <laughs> during one of these things and, like, this is not my usual crying, like, uncontrollable, goes for ages and like the noises that I was making, like these huge sobbing noises and I'm just like, you know, like I'm in the moment having these horrible feelings, but then also like having that detached perspective of myself, like what the heck, like it was actually scary going through that because it's just like, I am not in control of myself remote. Like, yeah, it was, it was really fucked up and that happened a few times and, you know, like just the absolute despair of it. I even started looking up like hospital stuff again and should I try meds again despite like everything that's gone wrong with meds in the past and how bad hospitals look for my particular issues and then just sort of getting kind of bummed that there are no other options really for mental health. Like what I would really need is like... Like, you know, when you're a kid and they have those camps and you go and do activities and you just don't care about anything for a while and, you know, doing fun stuff that makes you exercise without you realizing that you're exercising, I think that would maybe help me, except that I'm old and grumpy and unfit now and no one does that for adults without charging a huge amount of money. Anyway, no, um, so I had that a few times and was just doing really badly and... I think as a result, so my parents have like actually been a lot better with me and more supportive and all that. Um, and so like, you know, we've talked about dogs uh, and we actually went and met some dogs, uh, but I haven't applied for anything yet. Oh no, like, ah, uh, it's a whole other issue that I'm not really going to get bogged into right now. Um, but yeah, no, like they've been more supportive and sort of realized just how bad my mental health is getting. I, I smile and I laugh like it's a joke, but that's definitely defense mechanism so that you can't see how badly I've been doing. Um, but yeah, no, so I've just been doing really badly and my parents have been like, oh shit. <laughs> I think they're worried that I might do something to myself, if you get what I'm talking about. Um, and yeah, you know, the, the thoughts cross my mind, but there are just no acceptable methods available to me, so that's probably what's kept me alive lately. Um, also, since I stopped doing YouTube, like, you know, daily, daily uploads, okay, and I know that kind of happened suddenly, I didn't give you guys any warning, but that's mental illness for you, you guys should expect me to do unexpected shit. Okay, um, what I've been doing in the meantime, and I've mostly been posting this on Patreon, is a fuckload of art. And I'm talking like, this is a level of focus that I do not have, so I don't know what's going on. I've gone from like everyday YouTube mode to suddenly everyday art mode to the point that like the first day that I really went nuts with it, I did probably, like I did take breaks, but I probably did a total of at least, at least eight hours of drawing to the point that my elbow was getting sore and my arm was really fucked and I had to take the next day off 
doing any kind of art just to let my arm recover um since then I think because I've been doing so much my arm has gotten strong again like when I was trying to do that like daily morning pages kind of thing and it took a while but my, then my hand got strong again doing writing because I haven't done that much writing since high school exams um but it's kind of like that so like I had one day where I almost fucked up my elbow but then since then yeah my arm's doing better although sometimes I can feel that like holding the pen <laughs> it's not going great and then I have to take a break but anyway so I've been drawing for like eight hours just these little blobs on a really abstract kind of art thing and just doing that for ages with YouTube playing like I'll have like a two-hour podcast playing from YouTube about dogs and conspiracy theories about dog products and I'm just like I think you guys are overreacting but whatever it's kind of interesting to hear them talk anyway um and yeah listening to that and then I've been drawing and then like the two-hour podcast is finished and I'm like oh shit <laughs> Where did that time go? I don't know what's going on. I'm not the sort of person who can sit down and do eight hours of art, but apparently I am now, and I'm not a YouTube person now. Except today. Today I'm doing the YouTube thing. Um, I don't know. It's frustrating not being consistent as a person, because I can't plan my life this way. I don't know who I'm going to be tomorrow. Am I going to be YouTube me? Am I going to be art me? I Probably after I finish recording this, I'm going to go and do art rather than upload it straight away. So for reference, today is the 7th of February, just in case it takes me a while to upload this. Because the other thing about YouTube, it takes a lot of time, and especially me being a nutcase, um, I fill out like all the metadata and all the tags and you know try and make sure the ads are placed at not annoying spots because if you let YouTube do it every time I take a breath like that it would put an ad in so um, yeah I actually do pay attention to that um, just so that you can watch without it being too annoying and then sometimes like it'll put like an ad every two minutes and it's like why what the what is this like anyway so I do that I put in the cards um, I put in like, you know, I max out the number of tags. If you have vidIQ and you can see all the stuff that I'm doing, it's just like, yeah, girl, why? <laughs> because I'm a completionist and because I was around back when tags meant something. And so like psychologically, I'm like, I have to fill out all my tags anyway. And like the uploading process takes longer because videos are HD now and Australia's internet is better than it was a few years back, but still not really like international standards anyway that's that's Australia for you um <clears throat> yeah uh and it just takes a lot of time and then if I'm doing YouTube I, I feel like I don't have a lot of time for other stuff and I think it sort of I don't know it makes me spend more time at my computer which is not good for me I think because then I sort of drown into social media rabbit holes that go nowhere and it's sort of like mindless zombie scrolling um social media is bad for you <laughs> But, like, you know, caveats to all this is it was good for me at certain times in my life. And, like, you know, good for music networking and also just making me connect with people when otherwise I would not be social. Um, and then, like, with YouTube, it's been good for me during those periods of time where I haven't felt like I could do anything else. But at the moment, I'm doing the art stuff, which I'm actually producing things. And I feel like if I try and do YouTube every day, that's just sucking away my art time. Um, and, you know, if I get back in, I've taken a break from music as well, taken a break from singing mostly, because like, I was trying to practice singing, but then I think I was pushing too hard. And sometimes I just need to take a break from singing to reset what my body is doing. And then I've been too depressed to sing. Sometimes I've just been so sad that the tension in my throat has been all wrong and it just doesn't work. Um, and also, like, you know, things with my band have slowed down a bit because the guitarists have to do stuff. Um, and I'm playing the dumb singer role and trying not to be, like, trying not to take over organising things, so I'm just taking a back seat. I've been too depressed for that anyway. Um, but, yeah, I think they want to get me involved with some more stuff again, so I've got to get myself going again and that'll be fine. Um, and if they are doing stuff that I'm not involved in, I can just do my art. Um in between things that they need me for. Yeah, that's the trouble with being a singer, is like I've been in too many of these rehearsal rooms where people will be just jamming and I've got nothing to do because, particularly in metal, I kinda need the music to be there because it's not predictable enough and it's very precise, so like it's really hard to improvise over. And I've always sucked at improv. Been getting better, but I've always sucked at improv. Anyway, no, Um. so YouTube takes a lot of time. I've been in more of an art mode. 
uploading stuff takes time and I just want to get away from my computer and sort of get away from social media a bit. Also, like, Facebook is doing this annoying thing where when I try and open Messenger on this, on my phone, it asks me to put in, like, to set up a PIN and I'm like, but why? I have a password. I don't want to set up a PIN and so, like, it's just putting me off Facebook even more and, like... Every tech company seems intent on ruining everything to do with tech. It's like once tech became mainstream and then the profit motive comes in, everything's lame. Um, Like even Microsoft getting rid of WordPad. Like why? It's, it's, I use it for things when I don't want to open a whole word program, but I need something better than Notepad. Um, But they want to, like, you know, if you don't have access to Word, they're hoping you'll pay their subscription instead of going to one of the free alternatives online. Um, I don't know, it just, tech is starting to piss me off a lot at the moment, and I don't like, like, Windows 10, acceptable, Windows 11, full of ads and uh, some annoying things, like you have to have a Microsoft account and all this kind of stuff, and it's just putting me off tech. Um, I don't know, like, I got this kind of reputation for being a tech person in school, But actually, I've never been that tech. I just know how to use tech. And when I do buy stuff, I try and make it good instead of just buying a bunch of garbage. And so that's how I ended up with a tech reputation. I guess I was playing Game Boy before other people were at my school as a female. I don't know. Um, Anyway, like tech was more interesting when like back in the 90s when it was moving fast And now we've sort of reached that point where you can't actually double the speed of everything because we've reached, like, quantum levels of bullshit where it's hard to, you know, like, the the nanometers and stuff is getting hard to avoid quantum bullshit happening. And then quantum computers are not going to be a thing for a while yet. There's still so much issue with that. So I'm just, like, disillusioned with tech. And, like, calling all this stuff AI, like, chat GPT and all that, to me is not AI. I know like what I consider AI, people are calling um, general AI or something. And I'm like, yeah, but you could just call all these pattern machines not AI because they're kind of not what I was looking for. Like this is why I didn't do, I was interested in robotics when I was younger. And then after looking at all the stuff, I was like, there's no way we're gonna get anything interesting in my lifetime. Um, Like, I was particularly interested in robotics with AI, like, little robots that are, like, pets and so on, like, genuinely. Like, Ibo was really cool to me, and I know they had brought Ibo back, but the battery length didn't get any better. And they just added more tech without making it more intelligent or more lifelike. Um, what, the face has a screen for the eyes, yay. Ah, no, I just feel like tech isn't moving the way that I wanted to. Anyway, anyway, no, I'm just being put off tech, basically. So I don't really want to hang around on my computer that much. Although, because I can't use, I haven't set up a pin yet because I disagree with the thing. I've got a password. Why do I also need a pin to access my messages? And why are you trying to make this like WhatsApp or whatever? Um, (laughs) I have to keep reinstalling the app to me. And I'm just like, fuck it. I just won't use Messenger on my phone. I'll just use it on the computer until they try and make me do it on the computer too. And it's like... Because, like, a password, a, a PIN, it's a six-digit PIN. That's inherently less secure than a really long password with as many characters as you like, not limited to numbers. So why do they think that putting a PIN on here is going to make things any more secure? Um, and then... I don't want to just store it on my phone because I want to be able to access it on other things. I'm just like, why does Facebook keep doing things that don't actually improve the platform? And they keep breaking features and they keep making everything shit and making me not want to be there. And like Patreon's done the same thing. They got rid of that community thing. So now when I say, hey, spot the thing in this picture, um, no one can post that anymore. (laughs) It's just, it's stupid. Why? And then what? They're so proud of themselves for making their logo into a literal blob. What the f... And, you know, of course there's Elon doing his Twitter X bullshit. Um, It's just like the tech world is just... I don't know. I'm I'm not into it at the moment. And yeah, no. And so there's there's a lot going... That's a bit of a ramble. There's a lot going on with me. just not in a YouTube mood, not in a tech mood, in more of an art mood, maybe because the art that I'm doing is kind of meditative. I did do some more realistic art because the RSPCA had a 
um, fundraiser where it's called Poorly Drawn Pets and I signed up as an artist and so I drew some pet portraits which I will share once the donors get access to those images out of respect for their donations. Um, but yeah, so I did do some realistic stuff. I got a little bit, <laughs> I got a bit tired of that after a while. Like the first couple, great, but then I was like, eh, I want to go back to my own abstract stuff. And so I think the abstract stuff and like the process that I'm using, it's not like a strict pattern. Um, something about that is relaxing me. And even just putting the paint down, like I was pretty depressed one day, but I was like, oh, I got to put paint onto this paper. And that was the most peaceful part of my day was putting paint onto paper and just focusing on that. Somehow it worked. Doesn't always work because otherwise I would have done it in the past more, but for some reason it's working now. And so is the drawing part. And it's sort of like semi-random drawing because I'm responding to the textures in the paper and it's kind of a process driven thing. And chucking on podcasts like I did start with music but now it's podcasts in the background and um yeah that's just I assume like some kind of mindfulness thing or yeah I don't know it's it feels a lot like when I was doing YouTube and having Neopets next to it or Spider Solitaire next to it um it's kind of like that vibe except instead of just wasting my life and having my brain melt out my ears um I'm watching YouTube while actually making something. And I've bought a lot of art supplies lately and I did film some videos, I just haven't gotten around to editing them because editing takes time, whereas this I can just upload raw and it'll be fine. Even though I'm rambling and like all over the place, it'll be fine, I can just upload it um, and not not give a shit, basically. Um, so edited videos. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know when those are going to come out and I can show you all the, the art materials that I've been buying lately because uh, there was a shop that had a sale, right? And it was a really good sale and uh, I think I explained it all in that video so you'll have to wait until I actually upload that. But um, yeah, no, for some reason I'm just in this art mode and maybe because I've been so depressed that's all I want to do is just draw stuff. And hey, at least it's productive. So that's thing, mental health don't like tech, um, don't like what the tech companies are doing, um, just into an art mode. Still trying to figure out my life, so, like, I haven't applied for a dog yet. I think I'm getting, like, everyone thinks it's a good thing for me. And I did talk to my psychologist about it as well, um, and she wondered if my hesitance was, like, a protective thing, which I guess is, like, the schizoid um, like, if I don't care about things, they can't hurt me. That kind of instinct that goes with being schizoid. I wonder if it's a bit of that. I probably have a bit of, like, vet PTSD, like, vet, pet health PTSD from dealing with Hope, all his issues through his life. I probably lost interest in other dogs during his 2020 crisis. It could have been earlier because I've been depressed, like, badly depressed for a long while. But, um... Maybe it was the 2020 crisis that really made me detach from other dogs. I don't know. Um, but yeah, like, and you know, I show people the dog that I've been interested in. Because I did, I did think about the therapy dog thing, but I don't want another Labrador. I don't think I can handle another big dog. Um, and like, you know, with Marley. Marley was great. He was sweet. But he was very strong. So it was hard to walk him. Um, and you know, like, he, he didn't get trained properly early so yeah he could pull until he started to slow down he could pull quite a lot and I'd have to use my whole weight to pull him back and I'm small <laughs> anyway no and um so that you know like if I did the therapy dog thing it would be a Labrador and it would be trained already so great but yeah big dog there's a lot to look after they do big poos and shed a lot um so yeah no I think it would be looking at something medium because also small dogs fragile bit of PTSD about, I mean, I say PTSD, I don't know that it's actual PTSD, but you get what I mean if I just use it as a shorthand, so a bit of a PTSD kind of response to the small dog thing being so fragile, and, um, you know, both my small dogs have had teeth issues, so even though, and, like, I think they had more, more health issues than the Labradors did, so just... So, you know, I've been looking at a medium-sized dog, and then I show people this dog, and everyone's like, oh my god, it's amazing, you have to get it, and then... Yeah, people telling me that it would be good for me. Um, I'm just hesitant because, like, I did make that short about what if I'm too mentally unstable for this and looking after it, is that overwhelming? Also, because I've been doing this art stuff, I'm like, am I enjoying the pet-free life? But on the other hand, 
like everything else, maybe this is just a passing phase and then like in a month's time I'll be done with all this art stuff and need to move on to something else. At which point I'll be like, damn, I should have applied for the dog. I don't know. And then my parents are concerned for me now and they're like, yeah, maybe you should get a dog because they don't want me, they don't want me to off myself, basically. Um, and so I'm less likely to do that when I have a dog and I have worried about not being able to care about it. But like if this little fluff ball comes at me, I'm not going to like say no to patting it. So maybe I would just, I don't know. Um, psychologist, yeah, we didn't talk a huge amount about it and I felt like I didn't really get enough guidance. But I think also my psychologist lets me um, sort of divert what the conversation is about. So when she pointed out maybe it's a protective thing, um, I think I initially interpreted it as people saying, oh, you just don't feel anything because of grief. And so I said, oh, it's not a grief thing. It's like I've had this for a few years now. And she just sort of let that through. But what the point that I think she was trying to make is that it's protective in the sense that I'm, I'm trying to defend myself by, like, if I don't care about something, I can't be hurt by things happening to it or, you know, things going wrong. Um, that's the point that I think she should have pushed harder, except that I can be, I don't know, I, I think she doesn't know what to do with me, um, and doesn't know how to handle me, but hey, I don't know what else to do, and it's too hard to find other psychologists who would get that, like, you know, push back just enough. Not so, like, the psychiatrist pushed back too much and just went his own way instead of listening to me, that's too much the other way, whereas this one is letting me get away with too much excuses, I guess. Um, so I think I need her to push back a little bit more, but mm, anyway, no, but then I did go away and think about it and think, oh, maybe it is, maybe I am making excuses, and I was like, maybe I should wait until my parents go on holiday and come back in, like, six months' time before I, but, like, you know, am I just trying to put it off for ages, like, oh, I'll make that six months later me's problem, um, and then, you know, with mum yesterday, I was like, oh, you know, I'm probably still, if I, if I wait, or if I decide I'm not going to get a dog, I'm probably still going to be thinking like, oh, no. anyway, I don't know, I don't know, I've got to, I've got to, like, look at a few more things, um, anyway, and then if I, the, the, here's, okay, here's, here's why the dog thing is important for the topic of this video, um, if I get a dog, it's probably going to be a puppy, because, you know, that's better for bonding with it. And then with Mikey, my disabled brother, the dogs we've had that were the best with him were the ones we had as puppies, whereas the ones we got when they were a year or two old, um, they would just, they would avoid him <laughs> rather than be okay with interacting. And Hope was amazing with Mikey, especially for a little dog. That was surprising. Like our first Labrador we had as puppy and she was good with him, but, you know, she would sort of avoid a bit. Not as much as Marley did, but, um, yeah, no, but Hope was amazing, like, actually actively playing with him. I think to impress me, but actively playing with him, um, that was really unexpected in a small dog. Uh, but yeah, I think, like, it would, if I got a dog, it would have to be a puppy to deal with that and to, like, get used to my issues as well. And if that's the case, like, it's been a long time, I've only had two puppies before. Four dogs, but only two of them were as puppies. Um, and it's been a long time since I had to deal with a puppy, so if I get a puppy, less time for YouTube as well, because I'll have to be too busy chasing this puppy around, trying to toilet train it. Um, this particular place wants you to crate train them and take them to puppy school, which I've never done, um, and take them to obedience classes, which I've never done. I trained them all myself. Um, Marley not so much because he was Dave's dog, but then I trained him in a few things later, sort of. Um, yeah, no, there's a lot of stuff and, like, the grooming and, you know, with a different type of dog, learning how different types of dogs work, and so that would take a lot of time. So how much time do I actually have for YouTube? I think, like, the point of this video is, I know, I know, I get so carried away rambling and then changing topics, but it's all related to the same thing as why am I YouTubing less and how am I going to do YouTube moving forward? Because, yeah, I think the daily YouTube thing is not who I am at the moment. It's not what I need at the moment. I'm also, like, you know, I haven't done any bonsai lately, but I've been thinking maybe I shouldn't live stream when I'm doing bonsai because there's a little bit of a pressure to perform in a way and then feeling like I need everyone to be quiet and leave me alone um, and just, like, things like that. And, like, even cleaning my shelves and stuff, um, 
I haven't done too much more of that, but uh, I was thinking like, if I try and film that, it makes everything take longer and am I actually going to get the things done? So I don't know. I'm sort of, I'm also in the stage where I feel like I don't need to document everything. I think this might tie into me not taking notes for my psychologist anymore. Um, I was keeping like a psych journal. Um, I just have lost the feeling of wanting to document everything and share everything. Um, so what am I going to do now? <laughs> I think I need to manage my time better. So I think it's good for me to keep up some level of YouTubing, but maybe I should scale back to like once a week or once whenever I feel like it, which is not that much now. Um, and then like also if I'm like one of the reasons for sharing everything is because then I don't have to make a decision about what to share. So like, you know, I would keep packages and, you know, try and film unboxings and so on. And now I'm like, that just stops me from wearing stuff or stops me from opening stuff. Cause I feel like I have to, I feel like I have to film everything cause everything is potential YouTube material. Right. Um, but so if I decide I'm not going to share everything, then what videos am I going to make? Do I just make vlogs about updates on my mental health or do I just do music videos? Do I just film ants? Um, I don't know what sort of YouTube videos to make. I like, that's probably why I did videos of everything because how do I choose? And then given that I'm so inconsistent in, you know, where I'm going day to day with my mind, like what am I interested in today? I. I, like, how can I choose something and stick to it as well? I don't know. So I don't know how I'm going to manage YouTube going forward. I just know at the moment it's not the thing that I'm into. It takes a lot of time. It takes time away from the other things that I want to do. Oh, yeah, another thing, since I've been doing, like, no YouTube for the past week and a half, I've actually been watching Xena! Look, I made it to season two. Um, I finished... Where am we up to? Look, I'm up to, so I'm up to season two, disc three. That took me so long, but I've been watching at least, I've been watching one episode almost every night, um, which is still, I know, less than I used to binge and less than most people would watch, but it's a lot more than I was doing. Whereas when I do a lot of YouTube, I tend to do the editing at night because that's when I can focus. Um, that's when I can focus on that sort of thing. Uh, and so then I spend so much time on the YouTube that I run out of time to watch Xena. Um, and the other thing is, I've been getting to bed earlier. So I was going through a period of like going to bed at like 2 a.m. and struggling to get up at 11 a.m. I've now shifted that. I'm going to bed around midnight, sometimes a bit after midnight, but around midnight I'm getting to bed. And then I've been waking up at 9. I woke up at 9 today. So I've managed to shift my, my sleep-wake cycle by two hours by not doing YouTube. So, you know, and that's another thing. If I, if I did get a puppy, I probably need to wake up even earlier. <laughs> and, you know, puppies need a lot of attention, so I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm just... I think health-wise, sleep-wise, I'm doing better by not doing as much YouTube. Like, YouTube's great for when I'm super depressed and that's all I can do. But when I'm actually doing the art and I want to watch Xena and I want to try and get healthier, I think I need to do less YouTube. And I think I need to also not put pressure on myself to like, so I film this right now, instead of like instantly uploading it, I mean I will set it to upload, but instead of like putting the metadata in and making sure everything looks good and reviewing the video, watching it, making sure I didn't reveal any of my horrible dark secrets or whatever the fuck, um, you know, just making sure that I didn't say anything to, uh, like, like that YouTube is going to ban me for, um, or like, yeah, restrict my video or whatever hell, you know, like reviewing my videos, cause especially because I make long videos, you know, if, if this video is half an hour, it would probably take me 45 minutes to an hour just to watch it because I would have to pause and like, you know, make notes about where to put ads or where to um, put cards or end screens or like if I said something wrong where to put a correction like you know in the description right oh I miss I misspoke this bit you know like that takes time because I have to keep pausing so it takes more than the length of the video for me to review it and then to write in all the stuff and make sure everything's good and I don't know a lot of the time I can't be bothered to choose a thumbnail <laughs> as I'm not but like for the amount of time and me not being someone who makes money off YouTube What's my incentive to do that when I've currently got other interests and things that I want to do and it's been better for my sleep cycle and watching Xena and I think watching Xena 
is helping my mental health maybe because I'm thinking about all the things instead of my own like depression um there are occasionally ones though where they deal with like death and loss and grief and I'm like yeah that's less helpful I don't need that right now thanks um anyway yeah so like I need to do less YouTube basically I'm sorry that's just how it is um, but I don't know how I'm gonna do YouTube moving forward. So if you're still watching and you have any ideas on what videos I can be making, maybe once a week, maybe once a fortnight. I'll try not to, I'll try to make a fortnight like the longest gap. I think once a month would be too little for my channel. <laughs> but yeah, no, like what do I make YouTube videos about if I'm suddenly not trying to document every damn thing? And maybe I'm also like, maybe I should abandon those unboxing videos that I filmed and just not do them. Sort of like the gardening videos that I never posted. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I want my channel to be. I just occasionally feel like going and sticking it on the internet. Um, hmm. Anyway, I want to go and do some art now. It's now just about to switch to 12 p.m. I'm also hungry and I haven't done any art yet. Thanks a lot, YouTube. <laughs> I wasted my art time for you guys, but my parents are out right now, so it's easier to talk. Anyway, um, so there's a lot going on, and I don't know what's happening with my channel, basically. <laughs> my nose is getting all weird. Oh, and I had a little bit of a mild health scare, but I went to the toilet just before, and everything's back to normal, so I think we're fine. Not to get TMI, but that's it. Bye. <laughs>